Hey guys, Wild Dan here. Today, we're gonna be showing a video on setting up a Pac-Man frog enclosure for my new Pac-Man frog, Fraza. Isn't she just the cutest thing? I actually don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I think these are ju it's a juvenile. It's my first time ever having a Pac-Man frog. Um, I think they're a little bit too young to sex at the moment. But I'm just rolling with, it's a she for now, because it's pink, it's a strawberry Pac-Man, why not? One of the things I'm doing is I, pick, I picked up some plants for the terrarium uh, at Lowe's. Um, and so one of the things I'm going to do is go through um, rinsing them and sanitizing them prior to me putting them into the terrarium um, using one of the techniques that Serpa Designed um, uses uh, to, to basically sanitize his plants. So I've um, I basically uh, prepared a uh, bin full of uh, warm water. So I'll do a rinse. I'll take off all the substrate off the plants and do a rinse. Sorry for the lighting. Um, for 15 minutes, and then um, make a 15% bleach or 5% bleach solution, and then leave them in there for uh, five minutes or so, and then rinse them again in water I treat with Prime to really help um, get rid of the bleach um, and give them a good rinse. So uh, that's something I'll be working on and I'll show you those plants in a bit. All right, so I removed the plants from their original 15 minute bath. They should be well hydrated now. I filled it up now with about 5% bleach um, solution. And this is really mostly to just really sanitize the plants, really get rid of any like eggs or pests that came in with them, like gnats and things like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and toss them into this bleach solution. Now this should be pretty safe for the plants. It's pretty dilute. Not only that, the plants are pretty well hydrated after their first bath, so they should absorb very minimal bleach, if any. Um, so, and this will be bath will be short too. It'll only be about a, a five minute bath. Um, and so we'll just dip them in there, get them really well, get, get all the leaves wet, make sure we're killing everything we can. I'm in there. And so while those were bathing, um, I had went ahead and taken the Liberty, siliconed some cocoa fiber liner to the back of this 10 gallon aquarium and then filled it up with some uh, cocoa fiber itself. Um, cocoa fiber is pretty good because it's a loose substrate, but it also is like uh, pretty good at um, keeping humidity. Um, and so it'll be easy for the amphibian to bur bur burrow itself um, into the substrate. Um, also not getting too like compacted from all the the moisture it retains. Now we're going to do some planting. The plants have um, gone through the bleach, they've been rinsed, and so they should be good to go. Um, not, I wouldn't say that is necessarily an ideal way to do it. I mean these plants should ideally go through quarantine of at least a couple weeks. Um, but it's a fresh system. Um, and if the plants don't work out, they don't work out. but. Um, so right now, right here, this is a bird's nest fern, um, really like it, um, and I think this is Janet's, Janet Craig Compactor or something like that, and I have some type of creeping ivy there that I'm going to plant along the back wall here to kind of, um, fill out the back a little bit, so I'll probably plant each of these in the corner, and I picked these because these are a really good size, um, for the, uh, terrarium. Um, and they'll give the frog um, some hiding spots, um, which I think you'll enjoy. Um, just just to see what these look like, where I'm thinking they should go. I don't know, something like that. Maybe the water bowl in the front, and then have some of that creeping ivy stuff going up the vines. Yeah, let's see what it turns out to look like. All right, y'all, this is what I got so far, so. Planted it kind of where I said I would have the um, the frog's shallow water dish here in the front um, that I'll fill with the chlorinated tap water. I kind of built up the substrate around the edges so to make it easier to climb into and um, get out of. I've also got some uh, magnolia leaves here that I've rinsed in the chlorinated tap water um, to kind of add to the bottom um, and just kind of make like a leaf litter kind of thing um, just to add. Um, you know, an element, an extra element, I guess, dimension to the, to the scape, I guess. I'm, 
Most people don't do naturalistic terrariums with Pac-Man frogs, but, you know, I figured I'd give it a shot. Why not, you know? Um, got all this material, might as well use it. So, you know, I know they like to have their burrowing room, and certainly they'll be able to burrow through leaves. They can easily move these out of the way if they want, like... Break some of these up. All right, maybe like a couple more pieces. And my intention, sorry, my intention is to make this like somewhat of a bioactive terrarium, so I'll add a culture of springtails into it too, um, which will help keep it clean and feed on the uh, excrement the frog leaves behind, so. So as you can see, I've attached now um, a digital thermometer from um, ZoomEd with the probe kind of here on the inside of this tank kind of hanging in this plant in the air, not touching the glass, because that's where I intend to put the heater. Um, and so it's good for reptiles and amphibians a lot of the times to have uh, an enclosure that has a temperature gradient. Um, so if they wanna um, temperature regulate, they can easily do so, switching between the cool side and the warm side. So I'm going to put the heater on the side with the bowl of water so the water can be a little bit warmer, um, and that way it can temperature regulate. Um, and so now um, I'll, figure, I'll know the temperature on the, on the warm side, and I assume the cool side will be either ambient room temperature or slightly above that. Um, and so the Heater I'm using is one I just got at Pet Smart that was on clearance. It's an all living things um, four watt heater. Um, so I'll go ahead and smack that on the side now. And so typically for uh, Pac Man frogs, they'll live ideally between a range between 75 and 85 degrees. And so that's what I'm aiming the temperature gradient will end up in the tank. Probably the warmer side will be upwards, hopefully in the 80s. I'm not sure it'll get higher than 80. I think that heater might have like an auto regulate that kind of turns off. Um, once it's 80, it might not, but we'll see. I'll keep an eye on it with the heater, uh, with the thermometer. Um, and then the other side should be ambient, which my, I used to keep my apartment at like 70, between 74 and 78 degrees. So um, that should be perfect for it. I also have this humidity gauge here that I'll stick on the inside. And the thing with humidity gauges is you don't want to stick them at the top of the aquarium, like you'll see, or the terrarium, where a lot of people, you'll see a lot of people doing that. Um, because that's not where the animal is living. The, the frog isn't going to be living at the top. He's going to be living in the substrate. And so really you want to get this as close to the bottom of like substrate level as you can. Because that's really going to give you a more accurate reading of what the animal is living at. Alright, and here I have one of my springtail breeding cultures. I'll add some into the terrarium, help get it started, make it a little bit more bioactive. They're not going to cooperate, so I'm just going to pour them in using, using water. Since they float on water, it just makes it easier. There we go. Now you have springtails in there. So that should help keep it bioactive, degrade a lot of the, if any degrading plant material, any um, frog waste, they'll help take care of that. The last thing we're gonna need to do is add our friend here, Fresa, who I'm actually thinking of renaming to Lil Mac, um, just cause I like it a little bit better. They are pretty well burrowed right there. <laughs> really hard to see, but we'll get her moved in once we're done, um, once this is kind of settled in. So hopefully within um, the next day or so, I'll get her moved in there um, and that should complete it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Everything's turned on, everything's running. The humidity right now is reading 
just under but it's about 75 percent so we're great doing great there temperature on this side is reading about 74.8 but the heater i just recently plugged it in it's still um warming up i just felt that it is warm so it'll get there and warm up that side so all right well thanks for tuning in and see you next time